about a bunch of sunscreens that do not give you a white cast. These sunscreens do not make you look ashy. They don't give you like that white cast. They don't make you look like a ghost. Um, this is a really great video for people of color or anyone that just doesn't want to look like Casper, the ghost. This video is the answer to probably like the most frequently asked question that people ask me. People are always asking me what's a good sunscreen or like what's a sunscreen that is not greasy or like does it give you a white cast. Um, all of the sunscreens that I'm mentioning in this video do not give you a white cast and are not greasy because I have oily skin so I totally understand why people would not want a greasy sunscreen. <laughs> and as always, all of the products mentioned in this video will be linked in the description box down below. All right, before we get into the first sunscreen, I do quickly want to mention that there are two different types of sunscreens. There are physical or mineral sunscreens and then there are chemical sunscreens. Majority of the um, sunscreens in this video are chemical sunscreens. I have a little bit more information about sunscreens in a video that will be linked right up here on the description box down below. That video is about sunscreen myths, you know, only white people need sunscreen or all sunscreens break me out. Those are just myths. But yeah, in that video, I talked about the difference between mineral and chemical sunscreens. I won't be talking about that in this video, but you can go watch it if you're interested in learning about it. So let's start with the first sunscreen that I recommend that does not give you a white cast. It is the Crave The Beat Shield. Now, I have been using this for the past two months. I love this sunscreen. So this is actually SPF 50 PA Triple Plus, I believe. This is a chemical um, sunscreen. Now, if you look at this product on the Crave Beauty website, it will say that it's an antioxidant day fluid and there will be no language about it being an SPF at all or a sunscreen at all and it won't even say SPF 50 or anything like that. And that is because America's regulations, like the FDA regulations, do not consider the chemical UV filters in this sunscreen as actual sunscreens. Now, Crave Beauty, which is also sold in Korea, um, they have a product called Beat the Sun and it is marketed and claimed as a sunscreen. The reason why they cannot market it legally in the United States is because the FDA just doesn't recognize the chemical UV filters in this sunscreen as actual sunscreen. Now, here's the thing. Sunscreens in Asia are like far superior to sunscreens in the US. Um, we are just like so far behind in SPF and just skincare in general. Um, you probably heard that saying that uh, Korean skincare is like 10 years ahead of us in terms of like ingredients and research and things like that. Uh, that is totally true. Um, the chemical UV filters in a lot of Asian sunscreens are like more stable. Um, they're less sensitizing. They are better for sensitive skin. Like there's just so many more benefits to the ingredients that they use in Asia. But those like Korean and Japanese brands are not able to sell it in the US and market it as a sunscreen. Now what I like about Crave Beauty is that they have this really wonderful sunscreen, um, but they can't market it as a sunscreen. So if you go to the website and you look at the bottle, it says antioxidant day fluid, you might be a little confused and like, you may not realize that you're buying an SPF, but I'm here to tell you that if you live in the United States, you can get the Beat Shield, which is a sunscreen, it is an SPF. This is the same exact formula as the one that they have in Korea. They just cannot legally market it as a sunscreen, but it is a sunscreen. <laughs> so what I like about this one is that it does not give you a white cast and the consistency is very light. It's kind of like a milky lotion almost. Um, it's very, very lightweight. It has like a natural finish, but once it absorbs into your skin after like five minutes, it doesn't really look like you put anything on your skin. So when you initially apply it, it looks like a natural finish. 
So I've really been loving this. I love how lightweight it is. I love the like milky consistency of it and I love how it absorbs into the skin and it doesn't break me out and it doesn't um, make my skin feel very sensitive. So I've really lo been loving the Beat Shield. Again, this is an SPF. They just cannot market it in the US as an SPF. So this is the Crave Beauty, the Beat Shield. Antioxidant Day Fluid. The next sunscreen I've talked to my channel before many, many times. This is actually like a cult favorite. Um, it's a drugstore product, so it is really inexpensive and very accessible. It is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Water Gel Lotion Sunscreen. They have, I think they have three different versions or maybe two different versions. They have an SPF 30 and then an SPF 50. I always get an SPF 50 just because why not? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a bluish undertoned white lotion, but once it applies to your skin, it doesn't give you a white cast. Like, if I can show you real quick. As you can see, it has kind of like a bluish undertone, but um, it doesn't give you a white cast. This is a chemical sunscreen as well. And as you can see, there is no white cast on this one. It is non-greasy as you can see, but it does give you like a natural finish. It's very similar to the Beach Shield, except the consistency is more jelly-like, whereas this one is more milky. This is for the face and the body. I've just been using it on my body, but you can use this on your face as well. Okay, now we are going to talk about two sunscreens from the same brand. I I've used both of these and I really like them a lot and that's why I'm recommending them. Um, the first one is the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. This is SPF 40. And then the other one is the Super Goop Everyday Sunscreen. Um, they have bigger versions of these. I just have like little travel size versions because they're so cute. Here's the biggest difference between both of these. Obviously this one is SPF 40 and this one is S SPF 50. But this one, the consistency is more of like a, it's more of like a primer. Like it's more silicone based and it gives your skin like a, a nice like soft finish, but it's completely clear. It's just very silicone-y. Whereas the everyday sunscreen, this one is like a lotion, but it's still oil free. So it's not going to make you look really greasy or oily. Um, this one gives you like a nice natural finish. This one, it's hard to say what the finish of this is. Um, I don't want to say it's a matte finish just because it doesn't like control oil or anything or it doesn't like make you look completely matte, but when you apply it to your skin, it gives you a soft finish. So I guess it's like a soft finish, not a matte finish. But the everyday sunscreen also comes in like a much like bigger version so you can use it on your body as well. This is formulated for your face and body whereas this one is really just formulated for your face. These are um, two other sunscreens that do not give you a white cast. And then um, this is the Super Goop Forever Young Hand Cream. This one is for your hands. Uh, I like this one because it's really flat and really thin so you can like put it in your makeup bag and it won't take up a lot of space and it's also a hand cream, so you are um, protecting the skin on your hands, but you're also hydrating your hands as well because it's also a hand cream. And this one is SPF 40. Um, I really like this one as well, and it does not give you a white cast. As you can see. This formula does contain oils, which I don't really mind because my hands get super, super dry, like super dry. Like my face gets really oily, but my hands get super dry. They're like polar opposites of each other. So I don't really mind that this one contains oil. Yeet. Just makes your hands look like really hydrated and glowy. All right, so this is a sunscreen that I use for my body as well. This is the Neutrogena Beach Defense Water and Sun Protection Sunscreen Stick. This is SPF 50. I freaking love this stuff because it is mess free. Like it's a mess free application because it is in a stick. Um, you don't have to like, pump out anything and then like rub it rub it on your hands and like rub it all over your body you know what i mean it's just very not messy and really easy to apply it comes in a stick like this and then you just like once you get to the beach or once you get wherever you're going or before you even leave the house even um you just like and then you're out the door you know what i'm saying 
The only thing is that it does look like a deodorant. So if you're doing this, if you're gonna apply this in public, people will stare at you. This That has happened to me before. Um, people will stare at you because they think that you're applying deodorant to your body, but you're not. Jokes on them, sweetheart, because you're protecting yourself from the sun and they hate to see it. So this is another one that I like to use for my body. And then um, a lot of people also ask me, how do you reapply SPF every two hours? Because that's what you're supposed to do. The sun is not our friend, you guys. Everyone has a different way of reapplying their sunscreen. For me, because you cannot really apply like a lotion SPF over your makeup or else it'll ruin your makeup. And also because I have oily skin, um, I use a like a powder SPF and I just like go over my skin with it. This one is by Supergoop, but Peter Thomas Rock also has one that I really like. Um, but this is a 100% mineral um, sunscreen. And as you can see, ooh, geez. <laughs> this was in my makeup bag, so it's like getting all over the place. But as you can see, it has like a little brush right here. And then the mineral SPF is right here and then it comes down onto the brush and then you can just like over your face to reapply SPF. And it is a mineral powder sunscreen, so it's not going to ruin your makeup. Now, the only thing about this is that, I'm gonna be honest, this probably isn't great for people who have dry skin because this makes you very, very matte. I personally have oily skin, so this is like great for me. <laughs> but if you have dry skin, I'm not sure how much you're gonna like this because it makes my skin very, very matte, if I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, but yeah, I use this to reapply SPF. And then the last sunscreen that I'm gonna talk about, I actually don't have it with me because I used all of it and they were sold out on Sephora for a very long time and they just went back in stock. I don't know what happened there, but um, it's available at Sephora now. It is the Neogen Daylight Protection Sunscreen screen SPF 50 PA triple plus Neogen is a Korean skincare brand. What I like about this sunscreen is that it is a physical and chemical hybrid. So it contains physical and chemical UV filters both at the same time. That one also gives you like a natural finish. Once it absorbs into the skin, it just looks like your skin. It does not give you a white cast despite it having mineral SPF in it. The only thing about this sunscreen is that it does contain quite a bit of essential oils. And a lot of people are very sensitive to essential oils. So if you know that your skin is sensitive to essential oils, I would skip on this one, but I really liked it, so. And those are all the sunscreens that I recommend, that I really like, that do not give you a white cast and are not greasy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I will leave all the links to the products in the description box down below. And I will also leave a link to that video that I was talking about in the beginning of this video um, so you can learn a little bit more about SPF and the myths that people have created about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.